Tahu Portiki Wiri Muratana once described his followers, or Morihu, as a garden of flowers. This year, only a small part of the 40,000 has gathered in front of the Manuao, the meeting house. They've come to be with their present leader, their Tumuaki, Mata Te Reo Hura, Ratana's daughter, seen here in purple and white. The occasion is the 117th anniversary of the birth of their founder. Also here to celebrate is the leader of the Kingitanga movement, the Māori queen, Te Atairangi Kahu, and her husband, Fatu Moana. The Ratana organization is twofold, the church and the secular, symbolized by the apotoro, or apostles, the akonga, the raupo waiata, taku tai moana, through to the Afina or sisters. One doctrine which distinguishes the Ratana faith is a belief in the true and faithful angels, intermediaries between man and God. Ratana believed the same of himself as the Mangai or mouthpiece of God. Ratana died in 1939 as the Second World War was beginning. He and his wife Urumanao Ngapaki are buried in front of the temple. Before he died, he prophesied he would become the government. Before he was born, it was prophesied someone would unite the Maori people. The land wars and confiscations which followed the Treaty of Waitangi devastated the Māori people spiritually as well as physically. They came to believe that just as the clover was killing the fern, so the Māori were being supplanted by the European. Many chiefs had lost their mana. The people lost heart. The remnants, Morihu, needed somehow to come together again. Out of this came a new brand of leader, spiritual leaders, Aperahama Taonui, and Te Koti Rikirangi were but two who prophesied the coming of a special man from Whangaehu in the west. From the plowshare at the age of 45, T.W. Ratana became the fulfillment of those prophecies. It goes back to the prophetic utterance again, where Te Koti Rikirangi stated, there comes a day that you will see a garden of flowers that will grow up and bloom at the mouth of the Whangaihu River. And when these plants grow up, its perfume will be accumulated and distributed throughout the country. Yeah. Wirumu Ratana was born at Tekawo near the town of Bulls. He was the grandson of Ratana Ngahina and the son of gentleman farmer Uru Kohai and his wife Ihipera. He gained the reputation of being an excellent farmer and of being rather wild, but his marriage to Uru Manao Ngapaki was a steadying influence. They had 18 children. When World War I called for fighting men, Ratana's eldest son, Tokoru, offered his services. Ratana himself turned more and more to the spiritual side and to his auntie and prophet, Mere Rikidiki, who believed a sign of calling would come to Ratana. <laughs> On March 18, 1918, Ratana was camping with his family at Whangehu when several huge waves dumped two whales on the beach. One was killed outright, while the other was in great pain. His calling became clear. He too would fish for men, but in two stages. To Ture Wairu, the spiritual plan would be relatively straightforward while to Ture Tangata, the political, would be a more painful process. On 
On November the 8th, after a day in the fields, came the visitation. A small cloud approached him, and a voice told him to be at peace. The voice said it was the Holy Ghost, and that it was appointing him the mouthpiece of God to unite the Maori people, turning them to the Lord. It is said his family didn't believe him. They thought him to be mad or drunk. But then an angel appeared before Ratha and repeated the message that he, the Mangai, was to turn the people from the power of the Toto. Ratana then went through a hokamato toda, a time of testing. Hey, Katia na korero. He tanga ta kora no hau. Why you chau? He's doing it again. He's insane. We'll have to take him to an asylum. No, no, it's not our place to interfere. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. He also went to Mount Taranaki to meditate at Victoria Falls, Terere Akapu. It was here that he saw the star and the crescent moon, which Ratana adopted as a symbol for his new faith. Everything, as I believe, was by inspiration. Now, referring to the moon and the star, you see, the top point refers to the father, which is blue. The white point refers to the Son of God, which will come unto you in a cloud. The red point refers to the Holy Spirit. And you will find those three, the, all, the uppermost. And then below, the purple, which refers to, to the co-workers, the holy and faithful angels. This is the emblem of tolerance. The star represents the star of David, so the Christian faith. The moon represents other faiths, which of course it brings them together, which we believe in our faith. Yeah? We believe in our faith that whatever church you belong to, you are my brother. You are Iho's Tong. Yeah? Old tribal antagonisms and anti Pakia feelings began to break down as people were drawn to Ratana. Ratana knew the Māori mind. By questioning, he brought about change of belief in tapu and the Māori atu. Tēnā koe, William. Tēnā nā koe, te māngai. How long have you been like this? Since I was a young man, about 40 years. And who did you see for treatment? It's Tohunga, Jepa. And what did they give as a cure? Tiene. You won't need this anymore, William. Do you believe in the Trinity? Aye. You will recover soon, William. It will take time, but you will recover. As long as you have faith, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In a few minutes, you'll walk away from here without your crutches. Soon, I'll take them away from you. The Karakia time. Oh my here. Oh my.
Tēnā nō rākoe e pā. Tēnā nō rākoe. Hei. Tēnā nō rākoe e pā. Hāra tu rākoe e wiremu. Ira ringa manā ki tanga te rungarau.